It's a pretty warm day today. And we had a peak of about 35 degrees Celsius around midday. And right now it's about uh, 33. My plants are loving the warmth and I can show you my leaf cuttings as well as some of my echeverias because man all of this warmth is really kicking their growth into high gear. So let's start with the leaf cuttings. As you can see the sprouts here look quite large and from my estimates I think they were they are now more than twice the size as last month. So yes, the string of warm days we've had for the past few days has really driven up the rate of the growth on these plants. Interestingly, it has the reversed effect on aeoniums. So as you can see, this is the same sprout that I've shown you in a previous video. Uh, the previous video was shot several weeks ago or maybe more than a month ago and as you can see there have there hasn't been much growth on this bud this is mainly because aeoniums are dormant during the warmer months and today has been quite warm and the temperatures have been hovering around this end for about several days now I have been closely monitoring the growth of my Mona Loa and as you can see it's looking really big right now. All of the all of this heat is giving it such a huge growth spurt. So I'm quite pleased at its progress so far. And man, look at all those caruncles. They're getting huge. I made the right call pulling out the Romeo yesterday. Because as you can see this one has retained its colors, but at the same time, it hasn't sustained sunburns yet. And I'll show you shortly the other, the other Echeveria agavoides that I left in the same spot, which is still in the area. And I'll show you what happened to it. I left this Gaia. And as you can see, some of the lower leaves have burns. These are sunburns. The same would have happened to my Romeo if I left it here because right now the Romeo is still um, is still establishing itself, it's still trying to recover and both of them have been dehydrated so the lower leaves are floppy. But I'm not really concerned and I keep saying this many times, I'm not really concerned with, with the damage as long as the central leaves are firm so the, the, the younger leaves are firm. And from the looks of things, the new growth is doing well. So I'm just going to going to leave this here, but I'm babying my Romeo more because you know it's just more expensive, and I don't want to take risks. And now that we're on the topic of faster growth during the warmer months, as you can see, this agavoides also has lots of pups growing around and most of them are in stocks it's probably a good time to start removing some of them because these ones in particular are starting to crowd around and i don't want them to deform because if i leave them there and they're they're forced to grow in such a confined space they they would deform and i don't think the the, the par parent plant would look pretty after so so yep I'm going to separate them, and give them space, and let them grow uninhibited. Because there's nothing else that suppresses their growth more than keeping them in a tight spot. So it's best to give them the space they need, especially now that it's the growing season for Echeverias. As you can see here, lots of them have pups growing underneath. But this one in particular has the largest pups, so I might start with this one. 
I'll leave the others to grow a bit more because they aren't looking so crowded yet. So I'm going to work on this one only for now. To make things easier, I'm going to use this pair of scissors because it's easier to reach the tighter spaces. So I'm going to go ahead and chop them. There's a couple more pups here, but I'm not going to remove them yet because they're much smaller than the ones that I've removed. So I'm going to leave them there to grow a bit more. And maybe in a week or two, that's when I will be harvesting them. And they should be around the same size as this. Or or rather, uh, they would be growing. Right now they are, they are at the same size and they would be more or less ready in a couple of weeks. I'm also pretty stoked that my lipstick has put out lots of pops. This is exciting. Alright, I want you to have a better look at my Romeo. So if you look at the bottom leaves, like this one, these are dehydrated and this would be really prone to sunburn if I left this outside. So as you can see, it has started to burn. But I removed it early, a day early. So unlike the, the Gaia, this one, this Romeo did not, didn't succumb to sunburns yet. The lower leaves are quite fragile and soft. But as I keep saying, I'm not that concerned because the, the center leaves are thick, are stiff, and are doing much better. So overall, I'm not that worried. It's just that I it, the Romeo just has a special place in my heart. Another thing I've been meaning to do is to remove this Paul Bunyan. Because as you can see, it has completely fallen over. The reason is that due to the growth spurt, it has become top heavy and the aging stalk could no longer take it. It's already lying on the ground. So what I'm going to do is to pull it up and do a head chop like what I did to the Zorro. And in its place, I'm going to plant something else. And a few days ago, I've decided that I want the socialite to be here. So that's what I'm going to do next.
so we know that I'm so we know I'm doing the right thing because as you can see this Paul Bunyan looks to be growing fast healthy right now the the base of the stem is getting all soft and thin and it's bendy so it looks like it start it's almost starting to dry out and another thing if you look closely here so there I'm not sure if you can see it there's some roots growing here so it's as if it's trying to prepare itself for when this eventually detaches or breaks if it was entirely up to me I would chop here but but I guess I'm going to chop much lower just so I can take advantage of the roots that have already grown but I don't know I'll keep thinking about it I would definitely want to retain the rosette and I don't mind if it grows new roots so I guess yes I'll, I'll stick to my original plan and I'll chop somewhere here it's a bit hard to get to so I'll I'll probably have to remove a few leaves yes that's what I'm going to do next so I have the Paul Banyan in hand now and as I was saying I'm going to chop somewhere over here so what I need to do is to is to find a way to be able to chop into this cleanly and for that I'm going to be using this cleaver but it's hard getting an angle so I would need to remove one or a couple of leaves and those would be this two or maybe just this one depends so I'll start with this first and I won't mind losing this one So I think it went off cleanly. I wonder if I can still use this for propagation because the large freely and caruncle types don't usually uh, propagate from leaves. But they do really well with head chops. This is why I want to uh, go as high as possible so there's more chances of getting pops from this part. Anyway, I'm going to see if I can chop from here now still feels a bit tight so maybe I'll remove the next the next leaf down so this was the same it was also easy removing it so I've got two leaves now and let's see if I can chop it properly Yes, it's working. So here's the chopped rosette and here's the base. So I still have quite, quite a bit of the base left and the chopped head is compact. So I'm really happy with how this how this turned out like what I did with the Zorro I'm going to keep this in bright shade uh, keep it keep it really dry well this one I'm going to plant now put it in a pot and leave it until and wait for it to grow pups because it will definitely grow pups along the stem so as you can see I now have two trophies <laughs> I'm a headhunter now as for this one, I'm thinking that maybe I should just end its agony and chop it off now before it dries out or and maybe even cause the the upper parts to rot. So I'm just looking for my secateurs. And here it is. I'm going to chop off above the dry area. I'm going to let this callus over and heal then that's when I'm going to plant it 
for now it's going to the propagation station where it can stay dry and not so warm over the next few days or weeks and now I have all of these cuttings and like I always do I'm going to chop trim off the stem but since I'm not going to use this in the landscape I'm going to leave quite a few of the stem so I'm not going to chop it too short I'm just removing the leaves because when once I plant plant this one it would be hard with the leaves in the way so all the lower leaves will be going And since I haven't decided what I want to do with them yet, I'm going to leave them here with the rest of the leaf cuttings where they could relax and enjoy the bright shade. So I'm just going to dump them on some of the blank spaces here. Now that the sun is low, I think, I think it's time for my plants to get a good drink because They've endured a very hot day today and now it's sufficiently cool enough without the sun directly shining over them. So it's time for a well-deserved drink. I know that I just replanted the socialite in this spot, but I'm pretty sure I haven't damaged it that much so I'm not really concerned if I wet it now. And besides, I want to prepare it for the upcoming warm days because it's still going to be warm. I think it's only going to be cooler in sometime in the weekend and that's about three, three, four days from now. So drink up you guys. Just as a side note, this morning light is doing much better than the Agavoides. And I think this is mainly because this one has been more exposed to the sun compared to the others. Because maybe the, the Agovoidus ones were kept under shade the whole time. And I'm not really surprised because I would do that too. They're precious. But in any case, when you leave them outside, especially a uh, few months before summer, then they're going to be hardy enough by the time summer, summer drops. This is why I try to grow them hard uh, way, way back before summer sometimes even as early as winter but in my climate we don't really go sub freezing here and it's the summers that's more of a problem because sometimes we reach the 40s celsius that's over 105 i guess in fahrenheit i can't remember but in any case i'm going to observe my plants and see which ones are doing well so far and which ones aren't and I'll move them accordingly. So now that it's pretty close to summer, I now need to change my habits. And the first thing I need to change is how often I monitor my plants. For the past few months, I've been checking on them once or twice a week. And now, now that it's getting warmer, I will need to, to have more snapshots of them. That way, it would be, I would be able to respond faster to changing circumstances. Like say, like how I intercepted the Romeo. And yes, the cost of the plant is a great motivator, man. <laughs> 